What's up guys? Welcome back to the channel. On today's episode of the Wood Rat, we're going to continue working on our sliding barn door kitchen island. So, let's get cranked up. We're going to start off today by building some doors for this thing here. Now these are real simple doors. They're not my usual shaker style or anything fancy like that. Real simple. All I do is take a measurement of the inside of this opening here. I cut a sheet of half inch plywood to that same dimension. And then I take some three quarter by three quarter pine material and trim out the outside. And that gives me a nice three quarter overhang around the outside of the door frame. And then I finish it off with a barn door cross in the middle of it. So yeah, pretty simple. Let's get started. Okay, now that we have our plywood cut for the doors, we are going to rip down some pine to a little over three quarter, and then we're gonna run it through the planer so we have three quarter by three quarter. What we're going to do now is take that three quarter by three quarter pine that we just milled down and we're going to run a frame around the plywood that we cut for the doors. This being three quarter and the plywood being half inch, that's going to give us uh, about a quarter of an inch inset panel to install our barn door crosses on. All right, now that we have our doors trimmed out, what we're gonna do next is rip down some one by pine uh, into two inch strips, and we're going to plane it down so that it's the same thickness as this drop right here. So that when we put our crosses in here, it will be flush with the trim of the door. Okay, we're going to be installing the crosses in the doors, okay? Here's the lumber that I've milled up. Same thickness as our, as our drop here. Um, basically what you're gonna do here, you're gonna get yourself a protractor, okay? So we can find that angle. Okay, and what you wanna do is you wanna take this piece of wood here Set it across your door like this. And what you want to do is you want to line this edge up with the very corner, inside corner of that corner there. And then the opposite side up here, you want to line up with the inside corner of that one. Okay, put a little pressure in the middle to hold it down, keep it from moving. Double check, make sure you're good on both corners. Then you're going to take your protractor and you're going to put that, run that up the side here until the ruler just touches the wood. You're going to bring it in until it matches the angle of that piece. 
okay? And then you're gonna lock that thing down. Or if you just want to read it, you don't have to lock it down either way. Bring that up until it's flooding, flush against the wood. And I have 25 degrees, okay? So I know I need to cut a 25 degree angle to get started on this. Okay, here's my angle. Now I'm gonna lay that in there, put that in the corner, and it should, if the angle is correct, it should, there shouldn't be a gap here. It should be nice and tight, and then this corner should still line up to the inside corner of that one, and that looks beautiful right there. Now what I'm gonna do is hold it here, maintain that, and I will come down here and just kinda eyeball and mark about where I need to cut so that this thing will fit into that door. Now, if anything, you want to be a little to the positive side. You don't want to cut it too short because you can't add wood back because you can take more away. And it's going to be obviously the same 25 degree angle. And look at that. First cut, beautiful. Looks fabulous. Okay, now we're gonna do the same thing. We'll go ahead and pull this one out. And we're just gonna set it to the side there. Now we're gonna do the same thing, only we're gonna go corner to corner here. Okay, and it's the same thing. Line up this, the inside corner up here. Then you wanna line the opposite side with the inside corner down here. Okay, now we already know what our angle is, so we're just gonna go ahead and chop 25 degree angle on here. Okay. We're gonna fit that corner. We're gonna shoot up here. Make sure our corner is where it needs to be. Give us a little mark. And cut it. 25 degrees. Okay, see on that one I need to nibble off just a little bit more. You just nibble away at it until it drops into place. Just like that, okay? Okay, now what we're gonna do is we're gonna fit this one in here, okay? Pop that into place. We're gonna take this one here, we're gonna put this in the corner down here, and we're gonna put this one in the corner up here, okay? Now you kinda of gotta take your elbow, just kinda of hold that corner down there, and put your, apply pressure with your hand up here so that they're both fitted to the corners, and then you just wanna draw a line right across here and here, okay? So now we take that out, we take our protractor, figure out what that angle is there, and we make that cut there and there, and then those two pieces will fit here and here, and it will all be flush. All right, let's see what we got here. We have... So about, about 38, 39 degrees. So I'm gonna start with 38, okay? And see, it's, and I'm gonna cut just back from the line so that if it's not correct, I can readjust and then come in closer. Okay, so 
sleeps at night, need to come in, I need to bring it in just a little bit, so it probably is that 39. And that looks good right there. That looks good, okay? And that piece is gonna fit right in here. I'm gonna take this, spin it around. And this piece is gonna fit right there. Just like that. That's how you do crosses in your doors. All right, as you can see, we have completed our doors and they look fantastic, okay? So now we're going to move on to fabricating our sliding barn door hardware, okay? And I use aluminum flat stock is what I use. You know, the first time I did this, I used steel. Feels cheaper than aluminum, uh, you know. But to drill and countersink and cut, and uh, it was really a pain in the butt to work with. Aluminum is so much easier to work with. That it's worth the extra, the extra money. It really is. I mean, you can cut this stuff using regular wood cutting equipment as long as you take the time, take it slow. Uh, it cuts pretty easily, though. Uh, you know, this is a six foot piece of one inch flat stock and I paid 10 bucks. That's it, 10 bucks for it. So, uh, let's get started. All right, what we're going to do now is cut our aluminum for our sliding barn door hardware. Okay, now when I cut the aluminum for this right here, I don't want it to go all the way to the end. I want it to set back in about an eighth of an inch. So. What I'm going to do is take this measurement here, which, you know, we already know what that is because we cut it, worked on it the other day, you know, 57 and a quarter, okay? And I'm going to minus that quarter. That's going to bring it in an eighth of an inch on that side, bring it in an eighth of an inch on this side. So we're going to cut this 57 inches. Now, when you're cutting aluminum like this, it'll cut on a, on a regular chop saw. It really doesn't dull the blade all that much, but um, you know this thing throws a good amount of chips. So always, always, always wear your safety glasses when you're cutting this. You should wear your safety glasses when you're really doing any kind of work. But if, if, if you don't, you should absolutely wear it when cutting metal. Here's our piece for the carpets. Now on this model here, okay, our doors, these are my old style doors. I don't really build them like this too much anymore. The reason I did these like this is because I have a customer I had done a piece for before with this style of door and so we're matching this to what they already have, okay. Uh, otherwise, normally I would be doing a shaker style door, which you know has a lot wider frame around it, so I can use the one inch uh, flat stock to make my hangers for the doors. Okay, but on these, you know, we only have three quarters of an inch here, so I have to take three quarter aluminum stock and cut the pieces for the hangers to go on the door. And I'm going to make those about about four and a half inches long, and that's enough to accommodate that roller on top and enough to the door so we're going to cut four pieces four and a half inches long
Okay, what we're going to do now is we're going to cut two pieces about an inch and a quarter long. And what those are going to be for, these are going to mount to the bottom back side of the door. And they're going to ride in a track that will keep that door from swinging out of the bottom. Another thing about cutting aluminum is, also is when you're doing this, you want to pull the trigger on the saw, get the saw up to speed, then slowly bring it into the aluminum. Okay, so here's our two pieces I was just telling you about. And here's our door hangers. They're gonna hold the rollers and mount the door. And they will ride on this one inch uh, track that we're gonna mount up here. All right, what we do at this point is I hold the aluminum up onto the cabinet and I make sure I have it about where it's going to sit. You know, eighth of an inch in over here, eighth of an inch over there. I want to make sure that doesn't move. I want to hold that. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to mark in the center of this style here and in the center of this style here. Okay? Like that like that okay and then I'm gonna measure in an inch over here on the bench and put a mark on that side and an inch from this side and put a mark and then I'm gonna mark the center and that's those are gonna be our supports where our spaces are gonna bring space that thing out we're gonna have one around it here 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 and here Now we're going to lay out our hanging brackets to mount to the door, okay? These are four and a half inches long. Now, I mean, this is kind of just a preference. The inch, the, the wheels I use for these things are, are one inch. Uh, I measured down from the top three eighths of an inch and I put a mark here, okay? That gives me just a little bit of that pulley wheel showing above the hanger, which I like. And the other two holes we're gonna lay out and mark here are just mounting holes where we're gonna screw it to the door. And I usually put that somewhere around two inches from the top and four inches from the top. I'm gonna repeat that process on all four. Of course, I'm gonna mark out the middle and then we're gonna center punch those and then we'll go to drilling. Now on these here, these, these pieces that go on the back to keep it in the track, same thing with that, I usually just mark it about three, three eighths of an inch down from the top. And of course, center. And we'll get those taken care of as well and then we'll, we'll get to drilling. Okay, I'm all set up here at my drill press to drill the holes in these pieces. Uh, I'm drilling them with a 3 16 bit. That allows the screw to slide right through the hole and then we'll be countersinking some of these pieces, not all. Let's get started. All right, now that we have all our holes drilled, what we're going to do now, I've done changed the bit out and I have a countersink bit in here, okay? And we're going to be countersinking the holes 
on the rail. And the reason we have to do that is so that they sit flush so that when the doors are sliding back and forth, the hangers don't hit the screws. Uh, and we also will countersink these little tabs that go on the back side of the door and right in that groove to keep it from swinging out. Uh, for obvious reasons, you can't have these screws sticking out or it will hang up and dig into the cabinet. So. This is the only tricky part about working with aluminum is countersinking. The, uh, the countersink tends to, tends to build up a little bit with, with aluminum sometimes. You kind of got to stop it every once in a while and push the aluminum out. But yeah, it's not that big of an inconvenience. So. Now that we're finished drilling and countersinking all our holes, I'm going to take the sander with 150 grit and I'm going to sand the entire surface of these pieces down. It gives them a real nice smooth uh, finish to it, cleans it up, cleans any you know sticky stuff or anything that might still remain on the, uh, on the aluminum. And it really makes the paint stick really well. So we're gonna get started on sanding these down and then we're gonna move on to painting. All right, we're going to be hitting this with a flat coat primer first, just to ensure that the gloss black sticks. All right, we're getting ready to paint these things black. Um, I just wanted to say that, you know, when you you want to paint this stuff a good bit in advance of when you're going to need it because the paint really needs some time to cure. Just because it's dry to the touch doesn't mean that it won't scratch off. And when you're assembling this thing, you're going to end up scratching that paint off if you hadn't let this dry for a good while. Uh, you know, so, so go ahead and fabricate your hardware, get it painted, and find somewhere that it can sit uh, obviously with no dust or anything to, to get on it you know while you continue to work on other things and then you know an hour or two down the road or whatever it's sat and cured and it you can assemble it without scratching it all up <laughs> 